So in the last lecture, we introduced two concepts, association and causation. In this lecture, we're gonna cover a really important example of this. So let's get started. So the last couple lectures, we've used this example, that the number of hours that you sleep is associated with your grade level on a test. Now, we're gonna actually gonna use this example and talk about the difference between association and causation. So I'm gonna ask you some really important questions, and these questions will allow you to distinguish between association and causation. So first question, does your lack of sleep hurt your grade? I mean, think about it. If you sleep only three hours, you're probably gonna get a low grade on the test, right? And if you sleep like 10 hours, you're probably gonna get a really high grade on the test. That sounds pretty typical, that sounds pretty reasonable. So, you know, these two things are associated. There's some sort of link between the two. That's a really, seems to be a decent conclusion, right? Now I'm gonna throw a curveball at you real quick here. Maybe your grade causes your lack of sleep. Like, think of it this way. Maybe your bad grades cause you to have some sort of like maybe anxiety, depression, or something like that. It really drags you down, ah, these grades, they really hurt me. They're really causing me to have a lack of sleep. That could be the case. In fact, think about this way. Maybe something else causes both the lack of sleep and bad grades at the same time. Maybe there's something that we don't know about, some outside influencer that's causing both of these things to happen at the same time and making it look like they're really, they're dependent, they're linked together. But really there's some other factor out there that's causing both of them to change. So it's important to understand that causation is really hard to prove. Even though from the outset, it looks really obvious that the number of hours you're, you sleep causes you to have uh, a certain grade. But just because it looks that way, just because you wanna jump to that conclusion, doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. It could actually be the other way around. And it's important to understand that this sort of thing happens a lot in different surveys and experiments. We gotta understand how to prove causation because that's actually really hard to prove. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture. You just watched a video from Amore Learning. We provide free math videos, and we offer many online courses. We also provide free math tutoring via YouTube Live every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video to get access to all of our free content. And put a comment in the comment section if you have any math questions. Check out all of our courses on amorelearning.org.